Hi guys, welcome to Ernie Electronics Repair and welcome to some special outtakes for this occasion. Easter, this well-known pagan festival, yeah. The one that occurs on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, yeah. That's pretty pagan to me. Anyway, however you like to celebrate it, whether you like to do fasting or whether you prefer all these fertility symbols of bunny rabbits and eggs and uh, mating rituals and running around the tree naked at midnight, whichever one you want to do, I'll go with the second option, I think. Have a good Easter in your own way, okay? Anyway, as I say, here's some outtakes, just a few silly things that have happened over the last few months. Enjoy. So I would expect to have more voltage here. And I think this is where he said he didn't get any more voltage. Okay. So, just get grounds a bit awkward on this one. Here. And I got a little spark. Eleven volts, okay. Just get to the end there. Uh, Yeah, 11 volts. I think I'm actually just accidentally cutting the end of that. I need to be careful of it. So, pretty much what he says, you get 11 volts on there, regardless of whether the charge is attached or not. Yeah, so power supply off. We'll just check the voltage again. Power supply off. Here we have 11.24. Okay, so I've just put the multimeter in the inset window there where you can see it. Now, Det's been writing a bit of code and I've been putting this together on our melted breadboard. <laughs> if you didn't see the live stream a few weeks ago, then watch it. Yeah. So, um, this is the microcontroller, the yellow wire is pin three. I don't know how clearly you can see, but this is the MOSFET tucked in under. under here and this is the is that 330 yeah this is the 330 looks more like a 33 to me but it's what i grabbed okay. <laughs> it's a 33 or a 330 i think that's actually a 33 said, said it doesn't matter said it doesn't matter yeah <laughs> obviously it was just in the wrong place in my little stash and that's the and that's the end of part two but there's something we didn't talk about, and that's SMD capacitors. So, you know what's coming. There's a part three. In part three, we're going to take a very similar in-depth view at the markings on SMD capacitors. We're also going to talk about the non-markings, because we find quite a lot of capacitors that are not marked on SMD. And that concludes part two, all you need to know about capacitor markings to fix stuff. But what haven't we talked about? This ah, creaky chair. And so concludes part two of all you need to know about capacitors to fix stuff. I'm going to add a mystery component to this circuit. So here's my mystery component. It has two wires connected to it. Okay. And I'm just going to add this to my circuit. So I'm going to connect one end to the bleeper and the other end to the junction of the capacitor and the resistor. Okay. And nothing happens. Now let me connect my component the other way around. Nothing happens. Okay, so we have one new capacitor here and another new capacitor here. Okay, so we have one new capacitor 
here actually i'm pointing in the wrong place i'll start again we have one new capacitor here another new capacitor here of course we need a few components as well to make these experiments of course we need a few components as well to conduct these experiments so we're going to have some resistors we talked about resistors earlier so you'll know about these this is a 22 ohm resistor this one is a Twenty-two kilo ohm resistor, twenty-two thousand ohms, and this one. Well, this is a. What the bloody hell is that? <laughs> okay, these little high frequency switching transit. These little high frequency switch, these sort of high frequency switching transformers, I don't normally bother. No, come on. These sort of high frequency switching transformers, I don't normally bother to salvage. You can if you want to play around with these. I'm mostly interested in the devices on here now. What's stopping me getting these is basically these two chokes, okay? This one has very long legs on it. So I think I will just actually... In fact, I don't need... Now, what's stopping me getting to these devices in this heatsink are these, basically. So with, so with the timer or delay circuit, it relies on the fact that it takes a finite amount of time to charge a capacitor. And the time will depend on the value of the resistor and the value of the capacitor again. The higher the resistor, the higher the capacitor value, the longer it will take. Now we can demonstrate this in two ways. The first one, we take our capacitor. We connect it to our circuit. Now you can see that the cyan trace is on zero volts okay we can demonstrate this quite easily also there's two ways to demonstrate this and i'll show you both ways so the first one we have our oscilloscope there you can see that the cyan and the yellow trace are both on zero volts. They're both set to five volts per division. So one division on the screen is five volts. I have my power supply set to 12 volts. Let's see what happens when we apply voltage. Let's see what happens when we apply some voltage. So I'm going to put the voltage on now. And the cyan trace went up straight away. And the... Now we can demonstrate this a couple of ways. So I'm going to show you both. So the first one, you'll see that the two traces on the oscilloscope the cyan and the yellow are both in the same position. Zero volts. I have no power on the circuit at the moment. The yellow trace is monitoring the voltage in. And the cyan one, the voltage across the capacitor. So there's zero volts there. Now watch what happens when I apply power. I'm going to put 12 volts on here. So what we should see is when the voltage appears, the trace will go up by about two and a half divisions on the screen they're both at five volts per division at the moment so let's have a look well there's a cyan trace straight away and look the okay well this is very easy to demonstrate 
well let's see so just measure across the output of the power supply should be able to get onto here I did see it twenty four volts. There seems to be quite a few scope meters coming onto the market at the moment, so let's see how this one performs compared to others. There seem to be quite a few scope meters coming onto the market at the moment, so let's see how well this one works. Ah, bitch. Let's just turn this up. So this power supply is a little bit at 5 amps, and that's reading 5 amps. Now it said you could read 10 amps up to 30 seconds. This is quite common for a multimeter to have a limited time for a current reading. So I have to say that's working perfectly fine. AC voltage. So this is on auto. This is choosing the range. So by default, as I selected this range, this is reading DC volts. We have a select, a range. So select will go to AC volts. Let's have a quick look while we're here. Frequency. Okay, that makes sense at the frequency setting. There's a hertz as well, but frequency on voltage range. Okay. Frequency percentage, that'll be duty cycle. Okay, so let's measure some mains. So I'm just going to connect direct to a main socket on this extension. I have a mains cord here. This is 220 volt we have here, 220, 240. So we'll just connect in here. I'm expecting to get the bleep. So let's try AC voltage. I have a mains cord here, so let's just connect to this and let's see what we get. Oh, ah, see. Hi guys, welcome back. Hi guys, welcome back to learning. Uh, bloody chest farting. Hi guys, welcome to learning electronics repair. You may also have noticed. You may also have noticed this little thing on my desk. So this also came with the microscope. This is an. Dropped it. <laughs> you possibly. Those bright-eyed ones amongst you may have noticed this little thing on my desk as well. Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a tablet here, all in bits. This was brought in to me by a friend of mine, Yuri, who has set up a repair shop for computers basically and he brings me a few other things in hi guys welcome to learn electronics repair okay, that game okay, on that hi guys welcome to learn electronics repair we've seen this before so this is out of an active speaker 
HK Lucas 600 Nano. And this just goes into protect mode and stays in protect mode. I also have the other panel out of here. You can see the model number now. So this effectively is the. I also have the other PCB attached to this. So this is effectively the mixer section. And if you connect your red meter lead to the negative voltage supply or ground and put your red on the here you see the multimeter in diode mode okay and what i've just uh, okay here okay okay so here you see the multimeter okay so here you see the multimeter in diode mode and i'll just demonstrate what i was trying to explain badly it'll be more obvious And if we look at another one, just another comparison, so this is a... And if we look at another one, for comparison again, so this is the negative supply rail, red lead. Okay, so hope you had a bit of a laugh at some of that stuff, yeah. I think the classic was when I connected the multimeter in 10 amps range directly across a mains lead. And you know what? It didn't damage that multimeter, the one I was reviewing, by the way, in the slightest, yeah. So that's another good reason why you should look at that multimeter. My 13 amp mains fuse didn't like it, but uh, we did the teardown on that meter afterwards, actually, on the live stream and... Uh, not only was there no internal damage, but it did actually have a 10 amp fuse. It was there and intact. Okay, so hope you enjoyed what you saw there. Yeah, you didn't get to see me run around the tree naked at midnight, but that's because Easter is on the Sunday and today is the Friday. And it's a good Friday, yeah. So you got away with that one because you remember one scene, never unseen, yeah. Maybe next year. So enjoy the weekend how you wish. I'm going to enjoy mine. See you all soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.